Good morning, folks. It's Cheryl Ann Webster here from SEAT, the Canadian International Institute of Art Therapy, and I can barely contain myself today. I had a lovely class night last night with our Therapeutic Arts Practitioner Program. We were looking all about group and community art, and it got me to thinking, is all the different interventions or activities I've had over the years that I've used with groups of six people, 26 people, and occasionally 500 people, all in a therapeutic realm. And I thought it's about time I shared a few more of those with you. So could I contain my excitement any longer? Not really. So here, let me show you just a little bit of my collection. Now I have to say, I have quite a large collection of containers and there's a very good reason for that. I have found them to be a fabulous tool for many, many years. And once your friends and family know that you need certain things for your therapeutic practice, they give you more and more of them. And of course, that's a blessing so long as you've got space to keep them. So let me show you a few things here. One thing I like about these containers is that I get to use them over and over again. So I have a collection that I keep and that get reused, and I have another collection that as clients or workshops happen, then they can use the container and take it with them as part of their art piece. So one of the reasons I started using containers was many, many years ago when I did a whole series like this for my own um, expression, shall we say. So I called them harvestive memories. And to me, it was about sort of seeing the, the times when especially bees start storing all the honey in the honeycombs and in there is all this precious stuff and larvae being left behind in honeycombs and all kinds of things that, you know, there's such precious objects hidden within something and kept safe. So I did another whole series on boxes and I think I shared that with you a few months ago. What I liked about this one is by putting these objects in there that I found precious and sealing them in. So can you see that? They look a bit cloudy now. And this is quite heavy. These are put in there and sealed in with glycerin, what you make soap with. And what I really like about this, and why I call it harvesting memories, like many of us, our, our memories fade a little bit over time but it doesn't take much to bring them back into our vision and into our mind and our hearts and our feelings by giving it a little wipe over. Well, it might take more than a damp cloth to bring back some memories, but in this case, the symbolism of it is just wiping it back and bringing more clarity back to that thought, that feeling and that experience and poof, there it is for everybody to see. So that's how I started this. Oh, it doesn't have a date on it, but it was a long, long time ago. And that's been hanging on the wall ever since. And the rest are exhibited in galleries. That got me into doing more work around containers because we often talk about containing our emotions, containing our feelings and helping our clients find a way to contain and regulate what's going on for them in their lives as they work through it. So with this came the collection. It started out with tins. People started to give me their tins and tins are lovely. They're very symbolic. And most people have had a tin in their life where they were cookies or buttons or beads or something. They've sort of been used as a little jewelry box in that way. And some of the tins come with their own decoration, others not so much. But being able to place items in there, being able to use it and talk about it. So that's where it started. And then, of course, sometimes you get some different kinds of containers that open in different ways or collapse down. And look at this little guy. This, this collapses down completely, if I can figure it out. There we are. And you end up with a little flat pack. This idea of changing shape and structure seemed to be quite symbolic and acted as a good metaphor. Also how they close or open. This one has a magnetic clasp. And sometimes with these containers, I find clients don't change the outside of them much. They might wrap them or tie them to seal them more once objects have been put inside, but otherwise they tend to stay quite like that. And then, of course, you get some really unusual ones like this one here. And this is perhaps one of my favorites. But if we think of it in terms of symbolism, how does that represent how I'm feeling right now? Or how does it represent 
who I am as a person in some situations, completely transparent and apparently today a little deflated. And it's easy to see how you access me. Look, it's a great big lid, easy to highlight, but you know, I'm not sure it's gonna survive hot water, but it will survive quite a lot of other things. And of course, with a little bit of hot air in there, it's gonna float quite nicely. You see where I'm going with all this, don't you? Then that got me to thinking about openings and how containers open and how that represents us. And of course, bottles. People give me lots of bottles as a way of looking at this. So if I get a bottle that no longer has a lid, then I leave it that way and I see if clients want to close it off or use a lid in some way, or are they happy for it to always be open? This one I can see through, but it's all a little distorted. So how much can I see the person? When how do I, much do I access the person if this is their representation of self? And then based on what they put in it and how they seal it shut. And then you get some quite interesting little lids like this little sort of heavy dropper that goes in here. And on the other half of that, some of them are sealed quite shut. And it says, you know, you're gonna let out something quite fierce if you break this air seal and unlock it. And then if you do that, do you know how to put it back down again? Do you know how to seal it shut and contain it for another day? This one is quite uh, different when you open it up and then getting it back together. Oh, it's a bit of a puzzle. So you have to know how to access, how to close it down. And that's without putting anything in it. Then you get some really fun and interesting ones that come apart. And because I stack them and put them away, sometimes I find other little surprises inside them, containers inside containers. So you'll find your clients or the people in the workshops you're working with will really find a lot of meaning based on the inside layers, the colors of it, how to access, how to close them, the shape of them, the feel of them, even the temperature. These have all been stored together, but of course the glass ones are much more cool to the touch than this fabric-y one here. Sometimes it's what's on the outside that gets a client really thinking about uh, what they're gonna use and when they're choosing from a selection, what it says on the outside, they probably will either cover it up or they've chosen it partly because it says survival kit, for example. And then seeing what's inside the survival kit, another container. What's inside that one? I don't remember because I packed them away a long time ago. Oh, more inside of that. So actually, this is probably left over from a workshop because here it says survival kit. Inside, well, it has a representation of the Day of the Dead. And inside that, little first aid dressing. So I think I'll leave those ones stacked up. So of course, if it's a short workshop with a number of participants, then we need these containers back and to be stored. So I would always let people know ahead of time, we're gonna select from these containers, this is what we're gonna do with it. And before the session's over, we're gonna put them back in the collection. If it's a situation where I want the clients to feel that they can use the artwork, they can change it, they can paint it, they can glue on it, then I'm gonna make it clear in this selection, you can choose from them and you can keep them or discard them. It's entirely up to you. But you always wanna let the clients know or the participants know ahead of time what they can do with them. Now, of course, there are some containers that are very obvious what they're for or what they were used for when they're first picked up. Others, or oh, there's another one of those safety locks. Others, not so much. So this one here has got a locking key. So it looks simple enough to get into, but do I have the key to this lock? And if I do, what am I gonna find inside? Well, because it's me, there's gonna be lots more containers inside, some tiny weeny ones in there. And look at that, the layer inside the box also has meaning. This one's very velvety and that rich purple. So obviously something very precious could be stored in there. So how a person feels about themselves or the situation at the time. And this little one is very precious on the outside, hand carved and inlaid. And then inside there's a little cushion for whatever treasure needs to go in there. 
So when we think about containing our emotions or using a container as a representation of self, that's what we're looking for how to open it, how to close it, what's the outside like, what's the inside like, and how precious is it? And then comes the time of altering it. So this one has been altered temporarily, it can all come apart again and be put back in the collection. Let me come a little bit closer to show you. So it used to be that I could see right through, I could see easily into this person or this container. I could see what emotions have been contained but now I can't see through and I hear there's something in there. So I wonder what that's about. It's got one of those big airlocks on it and even a rubber gasket seal. So I know this person perhaps doesn't necessarily want me to get in there easily. I have to get to know them first to be able to access who they are or what emotions they're containing. So I'm gonna open this up and don't worry, I'm not showing my client's artwork. This is actually mine. And inside, so if we look on the outside, it's got this wonderful design that looks very adult, very mature, even a little masculine perhaps. And on the inside, oh, there's a nice fun little bugs and playful happy birthday symbol on the inside. Now around the outside here, there's all kinds of storytelling going on in images and then inside a different story all together. And there's a found object in there. Now, if I really want to find out more and I really am working hard to access these feelings and these emotions with the person, then I also get to tip it upside down and look around and there's more messages on the bottom. Now, the reason this one can go back in the box afterwards is because all of it has been collaged separately from the container. So you see that? Just collaged on card, cut out and placed in. There's a little compass there and all of this can come back out. So my clients in this workshop have the opportunity to first choose a container that they feel will best express what they're trying to express in the moment. Then they have the opportunity to wrap it, tie it up, make a key for it, or decide whether the key even wants to show where the keyhole is. And then considering the inside of the container, what does the velvet mean for them? What does a clear container mean for them? Once they've gone through that process, they can look at how can they change it temporarily or permanently. The easiest way to change it temporarily is making inserts for the container or wrapping a container up. And of course with this one, filling it with all kinds of things that later can be emptied and this can go back into collection. I'm sure now you're finding it really hard to contain yourself too. You're going to be wanting to run out and find containers all over the place. Thrift stores are an excellent place. Telling family and friends that you're looking for containers of different shapes and sizes and colors with different openings. And if they're missing their lid, that's quite all right too. If you've got the space to keep them stored, then why not start your collection today? And then when you're working with a group, and working in a, a small group of five or six people or even a large group like I do with 500 people, then this is an excellent way to tap into people talking and discussing about what they're containing, what they hope to contain and how to express herself using containers as a simple and yet very expressive tool that is reusable. Sounds like a win-win for me. Anyway, I hope that's helpful to you. Drop your comments in the messages below and looking forward to seeing you again on our next live as we do more and more work with therapeutic arts and art therapy. Take care everyone, this is Caroline Webster for SEAT and you know you can find us on our website and that's seat.org, C-I-I-A-T dot O-R-G. Take good care, bye.